welcome everyone who is uh, logging on, getting on to listen to our conversation today for this episode of Author Talk. Uh, my name is Aaron, and like I said, our guest today is David Kyle. Uh, now, a little bit of background. Uh, David is the founder of Progressive Ashtanga Vinsana uh, Yoga School and is the director of uh, All Progressive Ashtanga Teacher Trainings and Intensives. Um, with over 20 years of yoga experience and over 30 years in body movement and healing arts, uh, David has taught yoga worldwide, uh, including in South America, Mexico, China, Europe. Um, I think he actually uh, just got back from Europe, maybe. Yes. Um, uh, perhaps one of the most unique, uh, I guess, pieces or bits of trivia that I found uh, is that he was a student of Larry Schultz, um, which anyone in the, in the yoga uh, sphere, I guess, recognizes that name. Uh, he was the creator of Rocket Yoga. Uh, but what the general audience and uh, music fans <laughs> might find interesting is that he was actually a private yoga instructor for the Grateful Dead. So I thought that was um, a pretty interesting tidbit of information when I found that out. So like I said, David's new book, uh, Rocket Yoga, uh, Your Guide to Progressive Ashtanga Vinyasa, just released. Uh, and he is here to talk about it with us today. Again, welcome, David. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, how are you doing? Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, Aaron, doing great. Um, yeah, I actually just flew in. I, I wouldn't even say last night. I flew in early this morning. Oh, wow. Home to Puerto Rico, but I was in London. Um, I've been moving around a little bit, which uh, I usually travel. I go to different studios to offer trainings to different communities. And this book uh, has been kind of like a little bit of a showcase. Everybody's super stoked about it. We use it in our trainings. Uh, it becomes like a not just a guide for a student, but a guide for a teacher and their process and building. So it's been stellar and I'm doing great. I, I think my jet lag's not too bad. <laughs> That's good. Well, 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 you look good, you look energetic right now. So um, I'm sure everything's <laughs> gonna be fine. So- um, Stanga yoga I'm helps always... that jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm always interested in the backstory and I know you, you uh, just gave a little bit about how you do travel all around, um, you know, teaching. Uh, but I'm always interested in the backstory. So like, how did you initially, you know, become interested in yoga? And what has that journey been like for you to get to where you are today? Absolutely. Well, you know, I've always been into body movement. Uh, that's kind of where that, you know, 20 years of yoga, but before the yoga for many years, I was into break dancing. Yeah. Um, so flexibility, rhythm, um, gymnastic like movements were, were something that I had already acquired. And I got into yoga from my wife. Um, she was the yeah. girlfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we've been together over 20 years. And she was the one who was curious about the yoga. And we found one of Larry's studios in South Beach in Miami okay. when we were yeah. living out there. Um, I was doing massage therapy. I just finished uh, massage therapy college school and was working with the body in that way as well. And the first class I ever walked into was a rocket class. Okay which it's a Stanga roots, um, but as Larry used to say, he's known for breaking the hierarchy of the postures and letting students play with what would be considered more advanced postures that were sometimes held back from students. And okay. that's perfect for someone like me yeah. um, <laughs> because I, I got to walk into a series and see all of these fun, advanced uh, little mini inversions and things that actually reminded me of breakdancing a little bit. Okay. So I, I felt at home and uh, I immediately jumped into the practice and started doing trainings with their school, which was uh, It's Yoga. That was Larry's original school. And okay. he would train us in Ashtanga Yoga, which is a big piece of, of what rocket yoga is. You know, the, the foundation is the Ashtanga Yoga methodology. And when Larry started teaching the Grateful Dead, which you know, it's not just that he was the teacher for the Grateful Dead for a few years up until Jerry passed, um, but the Grateful Dead were the ones that pushed him out of the box, so to speak. And yeah. Larry used to say, this is Ashtanga Yoga out of the box mm -hmm. without the boundaries or restrictions. And they were the ones that encouraged him to play with the sequencing, develop this rocket yoga sequencing. They even coined the name, okay, well, you know, rocket well, yoga that comes from Bob Weir, who was like, you got to give it a name. And so Larry was like, what do you want to call it? It's just Ashtanga Yoga. And they're like, no, 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 we're going to call it the rocket. And 
and then a love affair was somewhat developed from you know his interaction between the Grateful Dead and this Ashtanga practice and allowing it to be a little more westernized okay I think is is something that even Larry was kind of open about it it was an eastern practice but with a western philosophy and that gave way for us to shift a little bit of the sequencing to create a different type of stimulation and something that was key for the yoga de development in the west becoming a little more you know individualized because it, it's a generalized practice but each subjective view you know you have to shift a little bit here or there and that's a big part of the rocket yoga it can modify it can advance Okay, um, so uh, along those same lines, um, if if you just do a, a search on yoga, to, trying to find the history, uh, depending on what you read, I mean, it said it dates back between 5,000, 10,000 years ago. Again, they, they, oh, they, yeah. they, they, depending on what source you're looking at, right? Um, but, but to that point and to what you just said, um, I mean, it has progressed over the years. So how have you personally seen it uh, progress over the years, maybe in your experience and just what you've learned over the years and as, a, as an instructor? You know, I'm, I'm a proponent and a supporter of what some would view as a westernized form of, okay. of Hatha yoga. Mm -hmm. You know, this physical yoga practice is something that we've definitely um, somewhat uh, secured a little more investment into when it comes to the Western world. And in a lot of ways, this is for physical health, this is for mental health, this is for even as the Hatha Yoga is prescribed to start to know oneself, right? Mm -hmm. Through the body, eventually to the mind and all of that. But coming from a background in massage therapy, um, you know, starting back when even a lot of these things like somatics, the idea of emotion and the body, uh, body work, um, something that yogis have always said, you know, with a healthy body will lean mm. towards a healthy mind, vice versa. And these are things that I think the Western world has contributed greatly to, um, even if it's just translating, mm. you, you know, getting right. this information that maybe comes from a different culture at different time and helping translate it into a language and offer an ability for someone to experience um, we've done very well with this, and, and I think Rocket Yoga definitely shifts itself into that contemporary form, mm -hmm. that, that Western form of yoga, and, and it's, it makes it more digestible. If, you know, Larry, my teacher, used to call this style the Montessori school of okay. Ashtanga <laughs> and yoga. It, it's not designed to be a full package that's the end-all, be-all. It's an excellent prep so the individual can take it. And then you start to follow the branches. You start to follow what interests you the most. And ultimately, we end up just sitting and trying to find some peace and quiet <laughs> in a <Right>. crazy world. <laughs> that, that's something I think everyone could uh, stand to do every now and then. Yes. <laughs> For sure. Um, so you, you mentioned how the, this is more of a progressive uh, form of yoga, progressive type of yoga. Um, and that that's really how you know it kind of evolved um is that what maybe you've seen has drawn more people to yoga uh more recently and especially this form you know allowing for more individuality more creativity uh in your practice absolutely um when i first started with larry you know his progressiveness to mm -hmm. to work with this rocket yoga system off of the Ashtanga yoga methodology, which is, you know, much more traditional. Mm -hmm. And often in the context of tradition, there's rules or guidelines, there's certain experiences that you're trying to replicate, right, right for the individual, versus creating something new mm -hmm. and being open to that. And, and even though it's new, like you've said, this has been around for almost 30 years. Yeah. Right? So creating a new experience, but then, you know, replicating that particular new experience for people. And when I was in this space, it, it was still, you could say, avant-garde, risque. Um, I've had quite a few, uh, you could say, run-ins, which is always good to have <laughs> discourse amongst different styles, different teachers, different outlooks. Sure. But sometimes they're kind of like, hey, 
I don't know about this rock and mm -hmm. yoga stuff, you know, and, um, and so there's been a little bit of pushback. But recently, even in the Ashtanga yoga world, which is actually pretty well known for having some rigidity mm -hmm. to its traditional method, in itself has become super, what I would say is progressive. You know, yeah. I've heard through the grapevine and they're like, oh, no, 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 you can definitely look at the individual and choose to soften here, soften there, no force, no um, expectations, things that a lot of Westerners maybe felt pressure from okay. in a more orthodox yoga practice versus this progressive contemporary. And so it is um, something that's influencing all yoga practices in, in many ways. But I also feel as though it's, it's part of what, you know, my teacher Larry used to say, he wanted to have Ashtanga yoga for the masses. Okay. Not, not just for the elite, not just for the super flexible, not just for the super strong, um, not just for the bachelors and bachelorettes who can spend five hours a day doing yoga, right. but just for, for normal people. And when the yoga practice is offered that way, it's absolutely more accessible and, and can reach a larger community. So if someone that practices regularly, then what are the, what would you say the main uh, benefits or draws are to rocket yoga compared to more of that classical style? Well, you know, with its versatility, okay. which is something that we pride ourselves on, you do learn a basic set of postures, which we consider core fundamental postures. Okay. And these, if you were to look through the book, mm -hmm. no matter what, Hatha yoga book you look at, you'll see these poses. It's a triangle pose, a, right. a warrior pose, right? Mm -hmm. And we somewhat build off of these, seeing them as classical. Some students need modifications, whether it's blocks or softening, but there's also this acknowledgement to variations that are more advanced. And so there's a, a opening for a student to say, okay, I have, and I'm not afraid to say it, I have mastered triangle. Okay, um, right. Triangle pose is not super complicated. If you're not used to it, give it a couple of weeks, maybe a few months, okay. and you'll be a master. Just practice daily. Right. And at that point, um, beyond just repetition and being in the pose, comes growth to a posture like Ardha Chandrasana, which is what we call the half moon. Okay. Right. Rocket, rocket yoga gives a lot of growth inside the space. But, you know, in the idea of a drawback, right? Mm. Um, maybe I'm going to always be a promoter of the, the practice, but let's just think of the person. You don't wake up every day feeling like doing more. <laughs> you know, True. the drawback is the subjective change. Some days you feel good, some days you don't feel good. And so instead of this um, rigid core sequencing that you have to somewhat wake up to and maybe even feel forced to do, there's a lot of versatility for you to take a step back, for you to modify um, do shorter practices and produce a practice that encourages you to want to practice on a regular basis, you know? Okay. Um, one of the, I think it's become more, more popular. Uh, one of the quotes, I guess, that, that goes along with Rocky Yoga. And I think it came from the Grateful Dead when they kind of named it was it's Rocky Yoga because it gets you there faster. Um, can, can you explain kind of what the meaning behind that is? everyone absolutely you know <laughs> with with this one uh it, part of me almost wants to go the old school style right. and so old school style i throw it out there is we just kind of laugh a little bit yeah. um i even remember every now and then being like larry where are we going <laughs> what's the rush you know yeah. why do we need to get there faster and um so it's these little quotes and sayings that were given were often uh, easily taken out of context or yeah. left somewhat open because it is an individual interpretation that's there. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that would attach to this is it's not necessarily a faster rhythm or speed because this particular practice can quite often be slower than the mm -hmm. traditional practice, especially when modifying the idea of where you're going gets you there. Where is this place? It's that point of contentment. Okay. And this is a tricky thing for the Western mind. You know, at what point are you content with where you're at? Mm -hmm. do, you, do you need to reach further? Do I need to be more flexible? Do I need to be stronger? And this practice, it's not just a physical practice, but it's very much interwoven with a few philosophical concepts and tenets 
that encourage uh, what's referred to as santosha or contentment within the space and not always trying to push beyond. And because of this element, uh, Bob Weir, who, who kind of coined that and a few others, you know, they just felt like the struggle was released. Okay. And that, that point that you were trying to reach where you were finally settled in one's body and self and able to move beyond, you know, into a deeper practice of yoga, whether it's meditation and forms of concentration, it would get you there a little bit quicker, not so much resistance. Okay, so not, not necessarily <laughs> the tempo then that, that gets you exactly. there faster. Exactly. It's a little more sense than It's a little different <laughs> philosophy. And then, you know, tongue in cheek, it's a rocket. You know, you, you right. can drive a VW, or you can ride a bicycle, or you can ride a rocket. It's going to get you there faster. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I, I think that's an excellent, excellent point, though, because you, I mean, you, you mentioned, um, you know, differences in the Western culture. And it seems like everything is high pace. You know, we, we have to maybe short attention spans. We have to do everything immediately. We want uh, immediate results. So that is kind of interesting um, saying like it gets you there faster, but it's not exactly how most people might think that that yeah. is intended to mean. So, yeah, it doesn't mean it's fast <laughs> yoga. Uh, it's designed to get you to achieve that, which the practice is designed for in a quicker pace. You know, some students do find that this particular practice, and that's in many age groups, okay. not just young, which it can be an exciting practice for the youthfulness, um, but also older practitioners uh, feel as though the way it's set up, finding that particular point of contentment and being able to create a regular routine and environment, they do find the benefits of you know decreased pain uh, which leads to less suffering better living mm -hmm. better lifestyle and they smooth into that pretty quickly now i'm a proponent of all yogas right uh, any okay uh, pretty much any yoga that you practice if you find your niche you put your heart into it you practice it regular good teachers are going to to guide you through that process and all of those benefits come you know um, stronger body but release of pain increased range of motion which even coming from a massage therapist and uh, physical therapist background increased range of motion will always lead to better living and this is something right. that we okay now uh, you you mentioned kind of all age ranges i'm curious um what what maybe is the age range that you have worked with specifically like how how young of a child or maybe how old of a uh, an adult have you worked with and maybe uh, kind of describe some of those benefits that they've been able to achieve right over over the years almost uh every range um okay. so i've taught birthday parties you know for <laughs> six to eight year olds and and to be honest i teach them rocket because it's just steady enough and entertaining enough for someone who's younger that they're not like bored with the practice sure. Um, but I have also done sometimes with groups, but also in private settings, people who range into the 65 to 80. Okay. Um, you know, I had a student who was 82. He'd come in every day and he would start with headstand. <laughs> and, he would, and he would go into his headstand position and a few of the other students, younger ones, would come in and be like, David, I, I'm worried. I'm nervous. What if he falls <laughs> down? And, you know, I'd be like, oh, no, leave Fred alone. He's fine. You know, because he did it every day. Right. He, was, he was amazing. Um, the core group, though, I would say that we usually have is that mid-20s to okay. uh, mid-40s, you know? Okay. And that's because when someone comes in early 20s, like I started at 20, 21, mm -hmm. even back then, that was rare. I'd say it's more common now, but still you know people okay. are enjoying their lives at that age right <laughs> uh, i have i have a couple of kids you may have heard mine in the background yeah. you know we try and influence <laughs> them but most people come to the yoga practice because something's broken right sure <laughs> whether it's the body the mind something's broken they need a little bit of uh tuna and as that practice settles in i often find people even my teacher larry you know which was more common it was early mid 30s because usually nobody's that bad in their 20s. It's right. not until early mid-30s that you start going, this, is, this feels different. Right. And somebody says, you should try some yoga. Um, so it, it allows the student to really kind of jump in to a pace. 
I would say if you come from a background that's a little more athletic, mm-hmm. um, it helps. Okay. You, you know, it's, it can, any type of Ashtanga practice can be a little tough if you're used to, say, a Hatha yoga practice that's uh, much slower. Um, some practices maybe in Hatha, you go through 10 poses in a class. Okay. We'll do like 75. Oh, wow. okay. Um, so, and then that's maybe it's all relative. If you practice a uh, yin yoga, then yeah, rocket yoga probably does look like a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. um, but if you practice more rhythmic styles, vinyasa styles, power yoga, um, rocket yoga and the Ashtanga is going to kind of fit right into that rhythm that you're used to. Okay. Now, speaking of rhythm, one of the interesting, um, sections of the book that I, or one of the sections that I found interesting, I guess, um, was the introduction of music. Now, for people outside of yoga might think, um, like, all yoga is, you know, wanting to sit silently in a room or maybe, um, you know, out in nature. Um, But you suggested the inclusion of music. And something that I found interesting, you you went all the way to EDM uh, as a possibility of uh, uh, music to include in Rocky Yoga. Can you kind of go through that? Because I think that's, uh, that might be kind of surprising for some people not familiar. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I was having a discussion with some of our uh, teachers uh, just the other day about how, you know, it's, it's a matter of taste. Okay. And, and that's something that's very important to acknowledge whenever we open up the idea and possibility of music. Um, we're not trying to even say, okay, this is your playlist. Mm-hmm. Um, I practice a, or teach a style that's called Mysore, which is a traditional Ashtanga, which is definitely usually in silence. Okay. Um, but sometimes I play a little bit of ragas or um, some chanting in the background, a sure. traditional chant something that's soft and steady, but just kind of, you know, moves the student to a different energy. And this isn't too far off. I've had some teachers, traditional teachers who've done this. Mm -hmm. Now, my teacher, Larry, and the Grateful Dead, he was lovers of that. So sometimes he'd kick on the Grateful Dead, which is pretty wild. Um, (laughs) It's it's like listening to jazz or something during, uh, during the play. And he would get into that. And often when he would do that, he wouldn't teach. He would say, okay, flow for a little bit on your own and listen to this music. He was very, you could say, tasteful in and out, playing with both music and silence. Um, Now, coming from my background, Mm -hmm. that's where, you know, I grew up with EDM. I grew up with um, this type of synthetic sound Mm -hmm. that um, is not natural, not traditional. Right. But... You know, I can still be quite timid. Uh, I prefer things that are maybe more on the loungy, uh, not so much voice, um, but a steady rhythm that's in the background. Okay. Sometimes a little trip hoppy, which is mm-hmm. influence of my breakdancing background. Sure. Um, you know, I tend to not, again, play things with that much lyric because it could get in between the voice, but then different teachers maybe choose and curate um playlist from their favorite artists and sometimes the message in the song it somewhat carries the intention of the class and so we encourage these things and you know i just got back from london right. which london is world famous for for being kind of a house uh, the mm-hmm. you know the source of edm right. and and all of these things and so you can definitely walk into a class there and it's just like normal music that somebody plays as they ride their bike or okay. takes a run, they'll have some house. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. You know, f- sometimes for people like me, maybe I'm getting a little too old for, for that. But what I've noticed is the teacher loves it and mm-hmm. the students who go to it love it. And that is the philosophy of the practice. You know, I, I know people on far ends that'll play death metal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> while, while, they, while they do your yoga, whatever floats your boat. So. Right. <laughs> You know, if that gets you into your zone, uh, for me, the the yoga practice is, it's not solely a space to go blank in the mind. Okay. It's a place for introspection. Mm-hmm. It's a place where when you're getting into your rhythmic flow, um, music often helps us get into that dance-like rhythm. It helps us release from some of the unnecessary uh, attachments that are inside the mind and mm-hmm. it produces a, a key experience for the individual. Anything to get you on the map. 
Right. That's something I, I, I would have never associated yoga with death metal. But I guess, I guess like you said, if it works. I've been around the block. I've seen it all. I've right. seen it all. And yeah, go, go to some place like New York or London. You'll mm -hmm. find anything you want. Inter very interesting. And maybe like, you, like we just talked about a little bit ago, I mean, maybe that is, um, I, I guess, a wing, a, an area that can draw more people into yoga to get them into the practice. If they're, it, I guess, it, if people realize that um, it can be accommodating to their personal taste, then um, maybe that will Absolutely. also get more people into it. Absolutely. Very, very interesting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I, I guess if, uh, if some Someone is not familiar with yoga at all, but you know, interested in getting involved, interested in beginning to practice. What would you recommend for a, a beginner or someone that um, is interested but has never even tried it before? I mean, what, what are some of those recommendations? You know, we definitely geared this book in the idea of hey, what happens if somebody finds it on the bench at the park? Mm -hmm. um, which I've already gotten a story. It's happened. Somebody was oh, like, really? I left it. I left it on the park. I went right back. It was gone. Oh. And I was like, huh? <laughs> Someone's been blessed. Um, now right. they will get all of the basic information. You know, it's not just a little bit of the history and some of that aspect, but you get the basic methodology of how to breathe, how to maintain uh, consciousness and awareness of one's body and movements, and a flow of postures that are there. Now that being said it's we're lucky enough it's been around you can find rocket yoga teachers okay. um where you're where you're at and that just takes it to another level you know when you get into a room and you practice with others sure which th that is something that i i think uh, i was talking earlier with some students the group environment being in a space and knowing that others are going through the same actions it kind of empowers you a little bit and we learn by seeing others do yep. the practice so much, not just a teacher as well, but other students. And so that would be my biggest, you know, you'll find the core basics in the book, but definitely go out, find a teacher, ask at your gym, you know, I'll plug it, ask, yep. ask around and say, well, why isn't there rocket yoga here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but they, they'll be able to find any yoga practice and, and that's where they can start their journey. 100%. Okay. I think that is one of the excellent uh, points of the book here. And I can, I mean, I can kind of flip through a little bit. Um, I mean, it's four color. I mean, you have, you know, poses and postures, excellent descriptions. So um, yeah, someone that might not be as familiar can pick up this book and, you know, just kind of go through and like I said, I guess to a degree, kind of learn on their own. But I, I mean, I do think this is something where you do want to find an instructor and kind of learn from them. Um, probably, definitely, that group environment is going to be beneficial in, in yeah. this case. Um, so, um, yeah, we've been talking for a little bit. I, I definitely, I want to be awesome, so, awesome I, conversation. No, Aaron. <laughs> it has been, it has been. But I want to be respectful of your time and not take up too much of it. Uh, like you said, I know you've been traveling a little bit. You, probably want to go take a nap or something, but, uh, um, but I, uh, like I said, thank you so much uh, for your time. This has been a great discussion um, about the book, um, about yoga in general, about your practices. Um, again, I encourage, really encourage everyone to pick up a cop their copy of the book. You can find it on our website, us.humankinetics.com. Um, I'm sure you can find it uh, plenty of other places as well. Um, excellent resource for yoga, excellent uh, resource if you had never heard of Rocket Yoga before but are now interested. I mean, maybe you are a death metal fan and you can find, <laughs> you can find a studio where you, where you can practice that as well. Um, but I, I will give you the last word here. Um, anything else that you want to add, maybe where people can follow all of your uh, excellent practice and information? Absolutely, Aaron. I, I really appreciate it, you know, and thank you to Human Kinetics. Um, the, the whole process, the whole journey with the team there and uh, being able to be with a publishing company that their, you know, mission is to offer education on the body, on fitness, mm -hmm. on health. And, and so that's um, something that I'm super stoked about being with. You know, a lot of our mission statements that come from Rocket and philosophy is on our website, rocketyoga.com. Yeah. Uh, I travel around the world and, and do give trainings. Usually we focus on teaching Ashtanga to beginners um, in Puerto Rico, and then we teach Rocket for like a specialization. So if you're already a Rocket teacher, or 
a yoga teacher yeah. and you're looking to specialize in a style, you can take a five day like retreat in one of these places. And I have a huge family. You know, one of the things we're proud is over this time, there's about 15 licensed teachers all over the world um, yeah. from Spain, uh, UK, down in Mexico, um, all across the US, several spots, Canada, yeah. boom, boom, I'll be in China in September. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, yeah. this is something that if you don't have a teacher down the street, hit us up on Google, you'll find a lot of good stuff. And, and I appreciate the time to be able to talk with you guys. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, pick up your copy. Who knows? Maybe you'll see. Uh, maybe you'll see David out in his travels, and you can connect with him that way too. So, yeah, excellent job on the book. Excellent conversation yeah. here. The there other you man. go. <laughs> Larry Schultz. Excellent job again. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for ev everyone for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. You as well.